Do you want do you want one of these? Yeah. I want to one of these. I'm kind of like you, I'm spatial. I said I'm not gonna read it. But it's nice to be able to see. so glad that you're here with us to worship this morning. Today we, we start our journey of, of Lent together. Today is the, the first Sunday of Lent. As you know, we had to, to cancel our Ash Wednesday service because of the extreme cold and the forecast snow. And, and indeed the snow did come, not as much as we thought, but I'm glad that we were all safe. You know, one of the, the great things about being Presbyterians is that we kind of can be uh, liturgically flexible. So we're going to kind of blend today uh, during our service uh, the Ash Wednesday service. We've prepared ashes in the back. I don't know if you saw them as you came in and we'll make them available to you uh, for you to, to mark yourself with ashes today as we start our, our Lent journey to, together. Uh, now, I'm suggesting you not put it on your forehead because people will think you haven't bathed for three days. But uh, uh, we're going to ask you to, to mark your hands and within your pod, within your group. Some of you will do it yourself. Others can do it you know, within your group. And it's only if you want to. But it's a way that we kind of can blend together and, and catch up on our, our journey of, of Lent. Again, we're, we're so glad that you're here with us in, in worship today. And now let's lift up our hearts and our, our voices as we join together in worship. Oh uh -huh. 
which is selected from Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sin of my mouth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, God instructs sinners in the way. God leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble God's way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. For those who keep God's covenant and God's decrees. Please join me in our opening prayer. Holy creator and sustainer of the universe. We receive truth and wisdom only through faithfulness to your righteousness. Your ways are beyond our comprehension. Yet you made us in your image and call us into relationship. So, so by your, your gift of grace, grace we, we worship, worship you in faith and humbly give ourselves in obedience. In all the wonder of your mystery, unite us online, through our radios, and safely in person, that we may today draw near to you in worship. Amen. Now I'm going to invite you to stand and sing our first hymn. Now, I, I talked about earlier uh, Presbyterians and liturgical liturg tradition. Uh, sometimes we have some flexibilities. As I was shoveling snow on Tuesday, this song came to my mind and I chose it for today. I hope you'll find that it's uh, appropriate. I know it's an Advent, but not a Lent hymn, but, Lent and hymn, but uh, I think you'll see why I chose it. Let's join together and sing In the Bleak Midwinter. Let's stand together. i 
came into the world to save sinners like you and me and he took our sins upon his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good it's in the confidence of this forgiveness that we can gather to make our confession please join me we come before you creator God a fallen and separated people. We have sinned against you and you alone. The shadow of sin cover us and our dark faults separate us from the light and knowledge of your presence. Have mercy on us. Blot out our transgressions. Forgive our iniquities and remember our sin no more. Reconcile us through Christ Jesus so that we may be partners in his new covenant of grace. Amen. And now I invite you to take a, a few moments for a personal confession, prayer, reflection, and take a moment to listen for God to speak to your heart this morning. My friends, through God's grace and in our faith, we are made a new creation. The old life has passed away, a new self has begun. My friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let's now stand and, and make some noise as we pass the peace of Christ together. Let's clap our hands. Amen. Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has pardoned me, and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. We're without end, without end. Amen. We're without end, without end. Amen. We're without end, without end. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture lessons today come from the book of Genesis, the, the end of the, the Noah story, and then from Mark, the, the set first chapter, um, the baptism and temptation of Jesus. So hear these words from Genesis 9, 
verses 8 and 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all and for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. Then the bow, when the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. And now from the Gospel of Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. We thank God for these words of life. During these 40 days of Lent, I hope that we can become more conscious of the wilderness that we live in in our lives. This season of Lent is a season of reflection. It's a, a season of, of discipline, our habits. It's a, a season of renewing our faith. It's a season of repentance. And in this 21st century wilderness in which we live with 24 hour news feed, uh, Phones with information feeding us constantly, uh, Facebook, TikTok, uh, you know, you, you know it, that captures our attentions and our, our lives, uh, global tensions, national tensions, local tensions, all create a, a wilderness for us today, a wilderness that catches us between our certainty and our doubts, between our, our hopes and our fears, between life and, and death. We are caught in a, a wilderness, maybe a wilderness similar to the wilderness that Jesus was drawn into. And this wilderness, whether we like it or not, is where we can live our lives and should live our lives in reflection and renewal during Lent's 40 days.
I grew up Presbyterian, but I've chosen to be Presbyterian. But the church that I grew up in was what I've called a, a low liturgical Presbyterian church. My grandmother used to complain, our pastor who was my mentor, if, if he, he was one step less uh, Presbyterian, he'd be a Nazarene. So it was my first year in seminary, and many of you know that I worked in the, the library. It was my job. And I was at the circulation desk one evening when my friend Mickey Eckert came by the, the desk where they checked out books. I said, hi, Mickey, how are you? And she, she walked by, and I was so frustrated with myself. You see, I looked up, and Mickey, I don't know if she'd been reading a newspaper or what she had done, but she had this black stuff all over her forehead. And, and she went through, and I thought, now what kind of friend am I to let my friend walk around with this black ink, black stuff all over her forehead? So I went in, and I said, Mickey, Mickey, you've got, you've got something on your forehead. And she goes, yeah, it's Ash Wednesday. And uh, it, was, it was like, oh, one of my first realizations of Ash Wednesday. I was my first year in seminary and was just understanding this tradition of Ash Wednesday. It's a, a tradition that, that starts us in our journey of Lent to reflect on our lives and our finitude. From ashes we come and to ashes we shall return, we say as we, we mark ourselves, echoing that great committal prayer, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. It's a way that we recognize our humility and our, our vulnerability. It is a way that we recognize our dependence upon others and our ultimate dependence upon another. Ash Wednesday and Lent starts us a journey of reflection in this wilderness of our lives about how we can grow in our relationship with God and with, with one another. This last month, the Presbyterian Writers Guild had a contest for those, uh, for poets and writers to reflect on Ash Wednesday. And the winner of the, the poetry contest was Ruth Linham Whitney. And I want to share her poem with you, Ash Seasons. She writes, Everything was easy then and clear. The world and I were heady with our holdings. I sowed my future breath to breath. Cunning has that lone cock who crowed while they led my Lord up the stone walk and hoisted him between the thieves. The season turned and eaves rescinded. The world and I turned gray. My father's jaw burnt to silt in an urn. My mother's slender wrist cast over buffalo grass where she began. My friend saw her boy earn his wings, his plane and body splinter. Far away, a girl of six knelt on a landmine she took for sawgrass. Hours like these, ashes fell. I kneel now and listen for the fall of ashes. Listen for the one who knows each spark, sees each particle alight on earth, gathers each tiny grave into the enormous dark where the return to life is done.
Ash Wednesday, the season of Lent, is marked by 40 days, 40 days of journeying and reflection on our relationship with God. 40 days like the, the 40 days of rain and not 40 days and nights of rain in the, the Noah story. You remember it was for 40 days and 40 nights that the, the sky let down rain enough to flood all of creation that only Noah and those who had been spared in the ark were to survive in the, the story. And today we see the end of that, that struggle with the promise of a covenant with all of life. Not just with humans, but with all of life, which is very important for us today. All of life, God has a covenant. And for that sign, God places the bow in the sky, the rainbow. But for 40 days and 40 nights, and you'll remember for 40 years they wandered in the wilderness after deliverance from Egypt before they reached the promised land. And now in, in uh, Mark, Jesus is now being tempted for, for 40 days in the wilderness. It's built upon a, a, an amazing and incredible event. Mark is much more concise in his, his telling of this story than Matthew or, or Luke. But just as, as clear, Jesus comes to the Jordan and there he sees his cousin John and there John baptizes him in the Jordan. And has he come up just as with the transfiguration last week? We hear God's voice saying, this is my beloved. This is my beloved. With whom I'm well pleased rather than listen to him at the transfiguration. But God's proclaiming, this is my beloved. Some believe that this is an adoption of Jesus. But most know that it is an affirmation of God working in and through Jesus to launch his, his ministry. But before he can go into the world, each of the Gospels has him driven into the wilderness. As I said earlier, Mark is more concise. There's no bread to stones or mountain looking out over kingdoms of the world or, or throwing himself from the temple as in Luke and Matthew. But simply that he's in the wilderness, tempted by Satan with the beasts cared for by angels. There in the wilderness, we see that Jesus faces the, the struggles of our lives. I, I, actually, I think I like the ambiguity, the openness of Mark, because it allows us to enter the story in ways that we might not, if it's just for bread or for power and might, things that are not obtainable to me and, and I don't thank you but but the simple temptations of distractions of self-centeredness of selfishness of of disregard for others of of desire for one's own satisfaction those are temptations that knock on each of our hearts every day no, that's the, the wilderness that Jesus is entered into. A wilderness, not any difference in our 21st century wilderness of distractions and things that will lead us away from our real meanings and purpose and, and relationships with, with God. But in that wilderness, in those challenges by the wild beasts, Jesus overcomes them. Jesus stays faithful. Jesus is, is cared for and remains the beloved. And on the other end, he, he leaves with the beginning of his ministry of, of proclaiming the kingdom of God has come near. My friends, this wilderness of Jesus is a wilderness that you and I know. We've known the wilderness of, of heartache, haven't we? We've known the wilderness of, of loss. 
We've known the wilderness of fear and we've known the wilderness of, of doubt. We've known the, the wilderness of, of loneliness and maybe even depression and, and isolation. In that same wilderness, Jesus remained faithful. In that same wilderness, Jesus remained hopeful. In that same wilderness, Jesus became obedient into love for you and for me. And when we fall short, when we miss our direction, when we become selfish like I do, and when I grasp and I want to control and I want to make things my way, we can know that Jesus has known these same feelings, but he's known how to withstand them. He's known how to, to live through them and, and even serve through them. So that when we feel broken, when we feel isolated, when we feel unworthy, Jesus lets us know that we're not. Jesus lets us know that God loves you and me just as God loved Jesus. Jesus lets us know that even when we do fall short to the temptation, to the beast, to our fears, we're still loved. Jesus lets us know even when we let others and ourselves down, as we emerge from the murky waters of this wilderness, in God's mercy and forgiveness, he will say to you and to me, just as he said to Jesus, you are my beloved. That's the wonder and the power of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. It wasn't for Jesus that he was tempted. It was for you and for me. So we could know that we are known, we are understood in our deepest and darkest places, and that we are still beloved. We are still loved. As you make this journey of Lent, as you reflect on ashes and, and our lives, remember, remember that you are beloved. And although this journey is a time of reflection and discipline and renewal and repentance, it's one that is shaping us and leading us into being the, the people and the disciples that Jesus called us to be. Yes, we've had a, a lot of, of struggles, a lot of, of difficult times in this last year. We've all given up so much. We've all lost so much. We've all had to set so many things aside that this Lent feels a, a little different, doesn't it? It feels a, a little a little rawer maybe, a little more challenging. But the end is still the same, that you and I are beloved. And in this 40 days, you and I are making a journey for us to realize just how much love we are. I mentioned the, the Presbyterian Writers Guild contest in conclusion, I want to share the part of the, the essay by Dean Myers entitled, Enough of Dust and Ashes. I think it captures maybe a lot of our feelings. He writes, How could I possibly not remember that I am dust in this our long season of pandemic? How could I denied access to my community of faith, not remember that even the best moments of our life shall in time return to dust. COVID-19 has imposed dust and ashes upon me forever. I am wondering what to do this Ash Wednesday. God, 
I have had enough dust and ashes. I've had enough numbers of COVID-19 case, cases and death, hospitalizations and ICU capacities. I've had enough news of climbing positive rates and agonizing lonely deaths and symptoms that linger for months. I've had enough of dust and ashes of economic crisis and emotional trauma and daily family stresses and mouth upon mouth separations and schools struggling to do their best and masks and controversies and political posturing and the denial that made it all worse. I and imposing even more upon us than COVID-19 has are the dust and ashes of our assault upon ourselves. I've had enough of black citizens killed by police, of police killed by anarchists, of democracy threatened by self-serving power, of our planet suffocated by greed and indifference, too many of our captivities by callously crafted conspiracies, theories, and of all of us likely to distrust anyone distanced from us. Nevertheless, I confess that I cannot let Ash Wednesday slip by unacknowledged. In the face of the suffering and death COVID-19 and the rest have imposed upon us, my face will bear witness to my trust that the cross triumphs over dust and ashes, including mine. Remembering my dustiness, I will repent of my despair and trust Jesus forever. We're in the wilderness, like it or not. It's where we'll live for the next 40 days. It's a place between certainty and doubt, hope and fear, life and death. But it's in this wilderness that Jesus meets us. And it's in this wilderness that I believe that even in our brokenness and our sins, we can hear the echoes from so long ago you are my beloved. You and you and you. Amen, amen, and amen.
Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Stephanie. Now's a time when we lift up our joys and concerns uh, in prayer. Um, I do have a, a name that I'd like to uh, share with you. Uh, uh, we've learned that Martha Hersler, who, Hersler, I, I, uh, uh, Hersler, Herslov, Hersler, I can't read my own writing, Kathy, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Hecker uh, was her husband's name. Her husband has died of a, of a heart attack. Uh, she was a member here, uh, but is now out in uh, uh, St. Charles County. Martha Hersler Hecker uh, has lost her husband to a heart attack. So we want to keep Martha in our, our prayers and her family. Uh, are there any other uh, joys or concerns that you'd like to share, especially today? Yes, yes. Amen. Thank you, Carol. Indeed, it was a wonderful day and worth celebrating in prayer. Amen. Any other joys and concerns? Let's, uh, let's come together in prayer. Oh, Lord, in the trials and tribulations, in the struggles and the heartaches and the hurts of this world, remind us that we are never alone that you are always with us. Your spirit is upon us and your life is in us and your care surrounds us. Lord, remind us in the times when life may seem dark and empty, where there may be feelings of despair and guilt and loss and emptiness. Lord, remind us that those same blessings, those same words of love that were showered upon Jesus are for us, that you have called us and named us beloved, that you draw us near with your spirit and with your word to strengthen us for our days and to, to lead us even in struggles to a, an inner joy, a joy that is beyond us and beyond even this world, but a joy that is in you and in trusting that you hold us today and tomorrow and that you do prepare us for our trials and you prepare a place for us in your presence forever. Lord, in these, this wilderness of, of ill health and of disease and of brokenness and hurt, remind us that you've claimed us and that you love us even as we are. Lord, it's in that love that we know that you have encircled Martha and her family at the loss of her husband. And all those that suffer grief, Lord, we pray that you'll lift them up and give them hope, give them resurrection and Easter hope even today. Lord, we ask you be with those who are battling cancers in, in their body, particularly Marilyn as she battles the throat and tongue cancer. Give her comfort and, and peace, Lord. Be with those that are caring for her and strengthening her. her. Lord, we ask that you be with Jean in her isolation. Watch over Pamela as she struggles with nausea. Be with uh, all those that uh, need to know that, that you are near and that they are, are dear to you. Lord, we ask that you be with all those that are caught up in this pandemic, those that are battling the, the virus, those that have the virus, those that are, are caring for those that uh, are fighting it, those who've lost jobs and work and have been isolated and are brokenhearted by it. Lord, 
we pray surround us and, and help us to see through this darkness to the, the light of your hope and the hope of your promises. Lord, guide us here at, at Forest and Presbyterian that we may answer your call to service and, and need and, and mission. Lord, we are thankful for our food ministry that grew out of our garden to our grab and go and now this wonderful blessing of our working with the food bank to, to serve so many. Lord, we're thankful for yesterday's gift of so many volunteers and uh, even with the, the cold, the, the joy of, of seeing people receive more than they expected to, to have uh, food for their shelves and their families and to know that even in our little ways and our little church, our little gatherings, that we can make a big difference and change people's lives for the good. Remind us and continue to remind us that together, when we work together, when we serve together, Lord, that we can change people's worlds and change people's lives. Help us in our food ministry and all our ministry here to, to reflect your glory, Lord, and to, to change lives for Jesus' sake and to serve in his name. In all that we do, Lord, we pray that we give you glory and that we trust that you're leading us and that you'll correct us and guide us to where we need to be in order to be your church and your people in this world. And it's because we trust you, because we place all of our hope in you and because you are the one that loves us even as we are, we come as faithful disciples praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have just a, a, a couple of uh, announcements. Uh, one uh, is regard to our uh, food bank uh, mobile, fresh mobile market yesterday. As Carol said, it was a wonderful success. Carol has all the numbers po posted on the, the bulletin board, but I'll tell you the numbers are, we had six pallets of, uh, of 60 boxes on each in our vestibule in the, right back there. And in, in our, and at the other door, we had two stations for people driving through the parking lot, picking up our boxes and, and loading them in. It, it, it's, it's beautiful to watch as a pastor. Uh, uh, I, I, it, it's so beautiful. I get to step back. I get to sit back and do what I like, talk. <laughs> talk to elders, talk to people. While you did the work while you were handing it out, while you were serving people, greeting people in their cars, all at safe distance with masks, but doing your part with the food bank and our, our mission here. And uh, thank you. Thank you for that beautiful vision. Thank you for your, your time and your, your sacrifice and your work to make it happen. And with that, uh, uh, this Thursday, we have our next grab and go meal from 4.30 to, to 6. We'll be handing out meals to whoever wants one. Uh, we uh, can use any help and volunteers and there's plenty of work. And if not, you can talk to Pastor Sean <laughs> and uh, uh, join us on Thursday around 4. Uh, some of us get here at 3.30 to kind of get the fire going, but uh, 4 to, to get everything around. and. It's a, a wonderful evening, and uh, you all, together, we make it possible. Uh, so that is coming up. Uh, and this is the, the only main announcement. The other announcement that I want you to mark on your calendar that I don't have on there is on March 28th, which is uh, S Palm Sunday. After worship on Palm Sunday, that afternoon, we're going to have our Easter basket giveaway. Uh, many of you know our Halloween grab and go. This is the Easter basket version of it. I think we may even have some costumes. We're going to definitely have our bunny. 
but this is we're going to offer it for our learning center children but also all of the community we, we're going to put it out uh, as much as we can on our Facebook I love fluorescent you know those things uh, um, um, for us to contribute to the the community and particularly the children you know the Easter egg hunts all of those we've had to cancel uh, our, our uh, bunny breakfast we had to cancel but this is a way that we can safely come together and share a little bit of that Easter joy with uh, the children in our community. So uh, it's a little bit ahead, and you'll hear more about it, probably more than you want to hear about it when I get, uh, uh, but uh, March 28th, this will be the Palm Sunday afternoon. So, so get that on your, your calendar. Again, thank you for all of your uh, faithful stewardship. Uh, you humble us by your, your giving. Uh, those who mail in their offerings, place it in the plate, or also uh, give uh, on uh, PayPal. So let's uh, stand together and let's sing our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. On Wednesday, we weren't able to have our usual Ash Wednesday service. We weren't able to have our kira, tearing of cloth for mourning, the Hebrew tradition of renting your garments in grief. But today we do it symbolically together, for we have lost so much and our grief is strong. We, we wish we could rent our clothes if it would make a difference. But we can rent our grief in our hearts. So as we make this journey, we, we bring to God all those things that are heavy burdens for us. And now if you have your, your ashes, if, if, and if you want your ashes or don't have them, uh, uh, do we have any left back there? Yeah, let's see. If, uh, uh, Dan, will you also grab the tissues that I set there beside them? Uh, those who don't have, who would like to have this, if you would keep this for your pod, I don't know if I have one for each one, but for your, your group, you may. My suggestion is, uh, as I said earlier, that you mark your hand with the sign of the cross, not your, your forehead, or though if you prefer the forehead, it's the traditional way of, of marking with ashes. And Dan, we have some over on the, this side here. As I said, even growing up Presbyterian, you know, this, this isn't necessary. You don't have to do this. It's not salvific. But it's a, a, a spiritual practice that we can uh, participate in. And I hope that it does lead you closer to, to God. It makes you reflect in these 40 days of, of Lent. By the way, the 40 days of Lent doesn't count Sunday. Uh, if, if somebody got their calendar, you'll find that there's more than 40 days because Sundays are little Easter's. Uh, and I think that's important to always remember. You know, when you're down, when, you're, when Sunday arrives, remember, it's, it's a little Easter. It's a little resurrection. And it can lift us up. I believe everyone who has the ashes, uh, let's go ahead and open them. So, My friends, when we come to the graveside, when I join you there with your, your loved ones, 
some of you, we've been there. I like to, to pick up the, the dirt from the ground and feel it in my hands and crumble it to remind all of us ashes to ashes and dust to dust. And we commend the body to the earth, but the, the soul we commend to God. For as we're baptized into a death like Christ, we're also baptized into a resurrection like Christ. So as we mark ourselves with ashes, we mark ourselves in our mortality, recognizing our immortality in Christ. So I invite you now to, to take your, your finger and dip it into the, the ashes. And you may mark upon your hand or your forehead or your loved ones the sign of the cross. Please join me in prayer. Oh, holy God, we ask that these ashes be a symbol, a symbol of, of us, of our mortality, of our flesh, but also a symbol of your claim upon us and your claim to value even dust, this dust that you have breathed life in and called your beloved and your own. Today, Lord, we pray that these ashes mark us on our journey for Lent. Help us in this time to reflect and renew and repent so that we might draw closer to you, God, and closer in our service and our love for one another. Lord, watch over us and guide us as individuals and as a church and as people of faith on our journey, our 40-day journey of Lent. We pray this in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I'm going to ask you to stand and we'll sing our final song. Sign us with ashes. Let's stand together. Sign us with ashes, merciful God. Children of dust, as to dust we return. Sign us with ashes, merciful God. Mark us and make us your own. Surely you alone can save us. You pay our price with precious blood, reaching through your great compassion, you lift up your people with love. Sign us with ashes, merciful God, children of dust, as to dust we return. Sign us with ashes, merciful God, mark us and make us your own. Surely you alone uphold us, you give us strength for all our needs, shielding with a Father's favor, you bless us with pardon and peace. Sign us with ashes, merciful God. Children of dust, as to dust we return. Sign us with ashes, merciful God. Mark us and make us your own. Surely you alone can heal us. Yours is the will to make us.
small Soothing with a mother's kindness The contrite of heart you console Sign us with ashes, merciful God Children of dust, as to dust we return Sign us with ashes, merciful God Mark us and make us your own Surely you alone can free us You break the bonds of guilt and sin Praising till we walk all brightly You bolster our hope once again Sign us with ashes, merciful God Children of dust, as to dust we return. Sign us with ashes, merciful God. Mark us and make us your own. Surely you alone refine us. You give us grace for lives made new. Marching through your bones a sacrifice worthy for you. Sign us with ashes, merciful God, children of dust, as to dust we return. Sign us with ashes, merciful God, mark us and make us your own. Surely you are us. You fill our dust with holy breath, bursting from the grave in glory, you rise from the ashes of death. Sign us with ashes, merciful God, children of dust, as to dust we return. Sign us with ashes, merciful God, mark us and make us your own. My friends, we are marked with ashes, ashes of God's love. And in that love, you and I are named beloved. We're claimed and we're precious. My friend, in this wilderness of the 21st century, in this wilderness of a, of a COVID pandemic, in this isolation that we are all been feeling, remember that you are loved and that you are God's beloved today and tomorrow and always. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. May the Lord, mighty Lord, bless and keep you forever. Grant you peace, perfect peace, courage in every endeavor. Bibles or money? Uh, I'm uh, uh, probably money, Terry.